You're listening to The Kylo Show, the podcast where we talk about how to keep your love on no matter what and why whole healthy families are going to save the world. And it starts right now. Hello and welcome to The Kylo Show. We are doing that fun series talking about singles and we're bringing on some of our favorite singles to help us with this conversation. <laughs> Experts. We are. We need help, expert input here. We do. And yes. um, we've been having good conversations around this yes, topic and asking great questions. So we're just really excited to keep diving into that. And because um, we believe that whole healthy people create whole healthy families. Yep. And, but you got to start with whole healthy people. So we've got some guests. Here we are. One of them is actually sporting our shirt. I know. I mean, you can barely see it. If he stands up a little tall, you can yep. kind of see it. There we go. So why don't you introduce yourself since you're wearing our logo? Uh, yeah, my name is Andrew Gonzalez. Um, I'm 39 years old, obviously single, and uh, here to talk about it. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Love it. What about you, lovely lady in the other screen? Hello. I'm not sporting the shirt, so I feel like Andrew's ahead of me right now, but okay. <laughs> my name's Everything's Allie. a competition. <laughs> Everything's a competition for me, for, for sure. My name's Allie Fantosi. I'm 30 years old and also single. Great. Well, we do have a couple of experts. We do. Yes. The fun thing about these two is, unlike some of the other guests that we'll have on the show, uh, you guys are in ministry in, in different ways or working for a ministry can you tell us a little bit about what you do, your role? And um, Allie, why don't you go first? Totally. Yeah, so I work for Jesus Culture, the movement side of Jesus Culture, and I am actually the conference manager and the resource manager. So all of our youth conferences, pastors conference, I manage those, help coordinate them, and then all of the podcasts that you maybe listen to, uh, those are also something I manage as well. And I love my job. Super busy, but I love doing it so much. I love it. And you're in Sacramento. Correct. Yes, I'm in Sacramento with the church, work in the offices or cubicles if you visited there. <laughs> <laughs> Allie's also uh, the rock star behind my conference. Yes. That, that is um, Imperfect Parenting. So Coming thanks for up. that. So excited. Yep. 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 How about you, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I work for Jesus Culture as well um, down here in San Diego. I am the children's pastor here. Um, no, I don't have any kids, um, but Jesus Culture has a history of hiring um, single men without kids to be a, a children's pastor. So here I am. There you go. There you go. That We'll get, we'll get back to that, but that's a very <laughs> interesting dynamic right there. Yeah. And everybody just loves you. I mean, everybody... Kids, parents, leaders you work with. It's just really, really cool. Yeah, he's done a couple of our classes, hosted it for um, Jesus Culture San Diego. And I know that you're always giving Ben testimonies. So you're well done for leading the families down there. Yeah, um, um, we, we are an official site license. Um, and we've, we've gone through Parenting 101 three times now. And um, the testimonies that we get out of there, um, we, we have testimonies the first week coming out. Yeah. And so we've had our hosts go through it. We've had our parents go through it. Um, so if you're listening, um, become a site license for Loving on Purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a plug. There's a plug. <laughs> there we go. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, um, I mean, you guys both have, uh, you know, a decade into the... Uh, you know, single life and uh, at least. And uh, in that, you know, you kind of create some momentum, you create some routines, some, uh, you know, in essence, culture, you know, you've created a, a personal culture, uh, you know, in that culture that you've created as a, as a person, um, what would you say you've set in there intentionally that, whether you stay single your whole life or you end up married, these are some things that will just never change about my life going forward. I love that question. I think for me, there's a few things, but one, one thing is just my relationship with Jesus. Um, that's something I 
value the most and I protect the most in my day. So regardless of travel, schedule, people I'm with, who who I'm with, what I'm doing, um, that's something I just do every single morning. It's the first thing I do when I wake up is I go hang out with Jesus. So that would be my most important relationship um, physically where I'd position myself to be in a day, but also spiritually, emotionally where I'm connecting the most. Um, and then secondly, just always having community around me. So even I wasn't always in ministry, even when I was in business, I still uh, found ways to stay connected to pe people that would sharpen me, call me out, encourage me, grow me. And that's just something, whether or not I walk into marriage or not, that uh, people that enter into my life, they enter into that that relationship with Jesus and those uh, relationships with people that are surrounding me. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh, it pr practically, if we want to talk practically, I definitely <laughs> will always make time to go uh, travel, have new experiences, work out, just those types of things. Because as you guys talk about, it's the whole healthy person that makes the whole healthy families. And I think it's super important to protect rest and to protect fitness and just everything you're doing that adds to your life so that you can add to the lives of other people. So yeah, definitely travel, fitness. Those are two things that I consistently, you will find me doing. Oh, awesome. Andrew, how about you? Yeah, um, definitely starting with the Lord. Um, everything that I I do is based off that foundation. And so um, whether I get married or, or whether I stay single, that that's always going to be a constant in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I think obedience like comes to mind. Um, uh, the Lord has moved me quite basically every 18 months since I, I started following Christ. And so um, if I was to get married, definitely having somebody that um, would be on board with um, big asks and, and um, big yeses. Um, that's that's definitely going to be something that's important to me. Uh, family and food are like my my go tos, <laughs> and so um, definitely having a community around me and and um, we we like to eat, we like to cook, and so that's a, that's a big part of my life. So how how far do you move when you move? Like across town or like across the country? Um, it's funny when we're talking about this because like I've only been single in Christ for six years. Um, and so I think it was around 2017 is when I, I came back to Christ or no, it was 2016 when I came back to Christ. And so, um, it was easy for like the first couple of years, uh, because I was, I was told to stay single. Um, but I started up in Washington and then came down to Sacramento. And then, um, I was in Sacramento for three years and then, um, moved down to San Diego. All right. So, so a couple times. Maybe you're going to end up in Mexico. There you go. Because you just are trickling <laughs> down. Kind of, so he fit right <laughs> in. Yeah, he fit right in there. You yeah. just had to keep going. That's, awesome. That's amazing. So with your, um, you know, you both kind of talked about priority is the Lord. Absolutely. I both heard community in there um, and, you know, different expressions of that. When it comes to you being single and what you're cultivating, what are you looking for from a community um, since it's probably an, an extension of your family since you, uh, one, you haven't created your own and, you know, I don't know mm -hmm. where your family lives, but what are you looking for in community that is strengthening you as a single person? Yeah, I think what I actually think what Andrew said is super good. That obedience piece. I think when I'm looking for community, I'm looking at the church first and foremost. And I always look for a church and a community that's multi generational. I don't just want opinions of people my age that are either maybe ahead of me in marriage and family, but they're the same age. They're still learning um, what that looks like. So I always look for people my age, but also just older people like moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas that have walked in places that I have not walked yet, whether that's through marriage, grief, um, death, you know, birth of new babies and just new different seasons of life and really intentionally pursuing those conversations, asking good 
good questions, but I, I also look for people that are are wanting to answer them, like wanting to be vulnerable, wanting to share the good, the bad, the ugly, and also just be, be really honest um, about my life. If I say, hey, I want to go this direction and I want them to be like, hey, love that for you, but you need to really start cultivating this or, oh, here's a blind spot. And then here's some things you're really good at. And um, I think that's really crucial in community to be looking for more than just people your your own age. I love that. It's great. Great. Well, you know, and I, Ali, I vicariously uh, know you through your relationship with Sherry and working together at Jesus Culture with, uh, on her team. And, and uh, so I, I hear the things that you're doing and, uh, you know, the things that you carry at, at Jesus Culture. And then, Andrew, I know you kind of vicariously through Zach and um, Bob and Lauren, and uh, everybody just sings your praises. So I'm getting to know you as you guys talk. I can feel it. And I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, and I want to circle back on something that you said. You, uh, Andrew, you said that uh, you've only been single for six years, which means what was going on prior to that? Oh, well, I said in Christ. So, um, I mean, before I, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to talk about my life before, um, as far as like in the context of where we're at right now, um, because I was not living for Christ. I was very much living for myself. And so I had, married? no, no, I've, okay. I've never been married, but I, I was in a few relationships before. Uh, Okay. Yes. I, I, I mentioned before on, on this series that both Sherry and I, uh, you know, we got saved at 21. So we did our best to destroy as much of our life as we could prior to 21. So <laughs> our, my single, my single life was, uh, kind of indescribable today. Like like my grandchildren just wouldn't even believe me if I told them stories. You know, they'd be like, Papa, no. <laughs> Lincoln would be full of disbelief. I know. No, I know. not my Papa. Papa. No. <laughs> you know, so got it. I get it. Yeah. Been there. I have, a, I have a lot of wisdom on what not to do. There you go. There you go. Awesome. So, do, oh, go ahead. Do either one of you uh, want to be married or is that in your, uh, in, in anywhere in the script going forward for you? Either one of you? 100%. I would love to be married. Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I second that as well. I, I mean, I, I would love it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. So it's uh, not it's not off the table, but you yeah. both are still, you're happening. You're on yeah. mission. You're, you know, you're not like waiting to get married to have a life. You're actually happening. So congratulations on that. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, you know, what is something that you feel like you've really done well as um, a single individual? Like, what is something that you feel like you've cultivated well that maybe you could give away to other singles listening? Like, what is something that has been fruit in your life, is this dedication to purity and wholeness and, you know, becoming a whole and healthy person? If that's, you know, you're not waiting around to get married, you're not waiting for to happen in life. Um, so what have you done well? That is something that should be acknowledged. I know I'm asking you to talk about yourself, but I am. I'm yeah. asking you to tell me what is so wonderful that you've been There's doing. There's a little list of prompts there too, if you need some help. You yeah. just kind of set them out there. <laughs> um, I would say something that is, I just turned 30, so I've been kind of reflecting on my last decade. Um, but something that I am really glad I did and continued to do was I found a mentor um, or late, probably late high school that has stuck with me the entire, like through all of my 20s. And I just chose, I chose her and then I let her speak into my life. And I also just pursued Jesus wholeheartedly. There's a verse in first or second Timothy, I should know this, but it's Paul talking to Timothy saying like, don't let people look down on you because you're young. And I, I feel like I chose at a very young age to actually like believe that and walk that out. And, and just as I walked out my own identity stuff and purpose and insecurity and fear and anxiety, I constantly went back to reminding myself and letting a mentor remind me 
that doesn't matter how young you are, you still hear God and you still get to be obedient in whatever that looks like. And, and so for me, it was, you know, honoring my parents and finishing college and being obedient and becoming a missionary and then being obedient again and leaving missions. And so I think that's something I look back and like, oh, I love that I did that. And I feel like I did it well. Awesome. That's great. Andrew? Yeah. Um, I, I spent so much time serving myself that when I came to Christ, uh, I feel like I've I've given him my my yes, and I think that that's been um, one of the best things that that I ever could do. I've embraced my past. I've I've been open and vulnerable about it. Um, I openly share with with young adults um, some of the things that I've walked through, and so um, yeah, I would say obedience is is the one thing that I've I've done really well since I came back to Christ. Mm. And and of course the what Ali was saying uh, about mentors. Um, I've got some really special people in my life that have been able to to speak into my life and guide me. And I, I do everything under their covering, and so that's that's huge as well. Yeah. Cool. And in singleness too, it feels like I mean you're single, like the word single. So it's really easy to isolate and make decisions on your own and and think you know what what you're doing. But it's like if we do all want marriage, then we really are always looking for partnership and looking for encouragement and looking for people to add to and for us to add to those lives. So I think there's a temptation in singleness to isolate and just do things that feel good or are convenient. And so it's actually a bit harder to choose mentors. It's a bit harder to, you know, I think God's telling me to do this. And yeah, so I love, I love that. Andrew. It's good. Good. Well, I tend to, you know, have conversations with lots of people. A bunch of them are single and a bunch of them are guys and a bunch of them are girls. And the girls are all wondering where the good guys are. <laughs> and the guys are all wondering where are the women to that want to get married? Uh, how is, is that common? I mean, do, do you understand what I'm saying right there? This just feels like it's everywhere. Like I, I can't, I can't figure it out. I cannot figure out why this group of hungry people can't meet this group of hungry people <laughs> and have a meal. Like, what is the deal? You Sounds guys, like we need a Danny you... Silk mixer right I, now. <laughs> I, I something, something's going on. I don't know what it feels like the devil to me. But either one of you have a, a clue or an insight as to why it seems to be like we just can't seem to find each other. Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for everybody else. I, I, I know that for myself, um, I would say that I'm not like actively pursuing um, dating. I, I, I feel like I'm on mission and, and um, God's given me assignment. And I know that when I do find the woman that it's it's going to to mold just perfectly, and so um, I'm I'm actually trying not to go out of my way um, to to pursue women and um, to be in the dating field. Um, it's it's not something that I want to do. I know that God has somebody perfect out there for me, but with my lifestyle right now, um, they're going to have to be on board. Um, they're going to have to be able to pick up and go. And so um, I I think that there's somebody out there that's perfect for me, but. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just kind of got my head down and um, doing doing my assignment and uh, waiting, waiting, actively waiting. Is what I would call it. So when you when you're talking to other guys, um, do you hear them talking about wanting to get married and or have a family? Well, I'm old, so most of the people that I know are already married. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, it's Fair. been a while since I was with the the young adult scene. Okay, so you, like like the young guys at Jesus Culture aren't, aren't uh, you know, they're just not finding you? Um, I, from the little that I know, I, they, they want to get married. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's, the dating world is is a weird place for Christians. Totally. It, it it is an awkward <laughs> place. Is is what in my in my little experience is what I found out. Um, there's a lot of awkward Christian copies, and you don't know if you're on a date or not. And um, and then the the thing that that I found out is that there's pressure 
um, to have your mind made up almost immediately. And so um, it's, it's, it's hard. I, I imagine it's hard for those young guys. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a short break and hear from our good friend Charles about some really great resources. As a business leader, what if you're doing people development all wrong? See, great leaders know the importance of investing in the human side of their business, but many either don't know where to start or they use traditional approaches that don't really work. Old training approaches like buying everyone a leadership book, bringing in a speaker, or doing a once a year offsite might feel good in the moment, but are often a waste of time and money. And that's because when people get back to work, they just slip into their old habits again. You see, personal growth it doesn't happen all at once, it happens over time. That's why the new way to develop your people, strengthen your teams, and invest in your culture is to create an ongoing people development system, not a one-time event. But how? Well, I'm glad you asked because I've got a free gift for business leaders that's gonna help. I'm Charles Cowan, founder of the people development company, GrowthStream. And we've discovered a simple but powerful four-step system that makes development easy. And we're giving away our secrets in a free training video. In this training, you'll learn how to develop your people in less than one hour per month using our simple four-step system. Plus, you'll learn how to do it yourself if you have time or outsource it if you're busy. So if you're a business owner, HR manager, or leader and want to learn about the new way to develop your people, strengthen your teams, and invest in your culture, then go to growthstreamtraining.com to see the video before it's gone. Again, that's growthstreamtraining.com. Can you talk, because I was, I got married at 18 and I, I've met Ben at 14, so I don't have a whole lot of single experience, um, but I, I mean, we are a place where singles come and we love them and put them into a family openly and say, you know, whatever you need, we're here for you. But what is, what is the, the weird and hard about Christian dating and, and what should it be? Um, That's a yeah. good question. Yeah. Go ahead, Allie. No, no, you go. You go. You continue. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's like in what you're saying. She's like, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you go. Oh, don't do tell. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's just what what I was saying. Of um, that, I, I think that there's pressure, and maybe it's just because um, I'm at the age that that I'm at, and um, some of the women that that I, I would be dating are obviously similar in age. Um, but you know, if you're gonna, I, I plan to live till I'm 80. So, um, you know, that I've got 40 years to spend with somebody. I don't think it's crazy to, to spend a year getting to know somebody. And so, um, the, the pressure that, that comes along of like, Hey, what are we doing and defining the relationship and, um, trying to move forward? Um, uh, it, it can be difficult. And, um, I'm, I'm okay with, with waiting to find out. Um, I'm okay with like a, a slow roll into things. Um, and so, Maybe that's why I'm single, but <laughs> <laughs> and um, not looking. <laughs> wow, he's actively. How did you phrase that? Actively waiting. Actively waiting. Actively that's waiting. waiting. Yes. Oh, and what I mean, like we it. we could we could talk about um, when the last question that you had about some of the things that we've done um, to work on ourselves. Um, I, I I think that that's one of the biggest things is um, I, I I've gone through. Uh, a few classes on on being healthy and being whole and um putting in the work that that's going to make me the best man that i can be the best father that i can be and so yeah i i think that those are um that's what i mean by actively waiting mm -hmm. gotcha i was thinking about when we we're planning or coming into this podcast i was thinking about how i i did not date growing up like high school well, my parents never really talked about it. And my personality was academic, sports, music. I was super driven. So it wasn't necessarily a priority. It was just something I wanted to do. But when I started coming to a Christian youth group, I always say like my generation or that age, age group of five to 10 years was the I Kiss Dating Goodbye generation. Mm -hmm. So that book mm -hmm. had just come out and at one of the first youth conferences I ever attended, you know, they were 
that book was being sold. They were kind of like a headlining speaker. Mm -hmm. And so it almost solidified this. um, I have a pretty independent spirit in me. So it almost solidified this, like, I don't need a man. It's not going to hold me back. And so it was just this thing of like, God, if if you have that for me, then great. Like, he's going to have to like whip in, be Mm -hmm. bold. And like, we're just going to have to keep moving together. But I think I kind of kept that (laughs) all through college. And then joined a community that was birthed out of YWAM and I was just around a bunch of people like me like guys and girls alike like we had given our youth to the Lord and it was like we'd move to any nation any country and sleep anywhere and so then it was almost this um level of obedience and almost intensity you know that I I kept looking for in a partner and actually had a two-year relationship that I thought was going to end in marriage um but but realized along the way that it just it wasn't good it wasn't right and no matter how many prophetic words i got in that relationship it it wasn't balancing out the actions and so it kind of that experience in the last 10 years of my life it's kind of redefined dating mm-hmm. for me so like andrew is saying i i feel like yes actively waiting but the question i continue to ask myself is like wait, God, like, what does that look like? And then asking the Lord, like, what does that look like? Um, Cause you, you hear just differing opinions, even within the church of like, get, get on dating apps or get out there and like, just go on dates. And I'm like, I'm a pretty serious person. Like, I don't just like hang out with guys <laughs> one-on-one unless I'm like, yeah, like I'm, I'll, I'm willing to get to know you, you know? So it's, it's weird. Mm. I think there's a lot of differing opinions too circulating that, makes it challenging even for those of us that are older and we're going like, yeah. wait, what? Like, are we doing this right? Yeah. So totally. I, wow. I remember that book, I kissed dating goodbye. I refused to read it mostly because I saw the title yeah. and I'm like, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. I mean, and, and I know a lot of people that are my age and married or went through this, um, this shame that came around, having a sex drive, having a, a desire to be um, pursued and desired, you know, so then they get married and they have all these issues because they're, they, they doesn't exist, doesn't exist, doesn't exist. And the husband's like, it should exist. Please bring it. And you're like, no, no, it's bad. You know? So <laughs> I, I, I wonder as being single, like, and you're kind of rediscovering that, that, that purity movement, even though it had a, a beautiful heart and intention of mm-hmm. bringing what's biblical truth came with a bit of shame and fear laced mm-hmm. in it. And 100%. so how do you, in this next season, you know, maintain purity, but also know that this is such a beautiful gift from God that he wants to have for you someday. And, you know, I don't know your, your background, um, Andrew, but I'm guessing that, you know, you were living it up on the non-Christian side. So now I'm guessing you're more a leaning into this purity piece, but how do you, how do you cultivate this thing in partnership with God without being afraid of swinging from one extreme to the other? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's a really good question. <laughs> um, the The purity thing is is has actually been pretty easy for me. Um, I, I, you know, when I came back to Christ, I I'm I'm redeemed, I'm restored, I'm whole, and so. Um, knowing that i i I want something i I want a woman that's um the same and so um holding out for that and um yeah just holding out for that is has been pretty easy for me just to um to walk along what kind of challenges do you guys think are coming your way to break your routine like you guys have a little rhythm a routine uh you know, Allie, you're talking about having time in the morning with the Lord and doing your <laughs> work. a few children and, in there. It was know, so, just so kinda, predictable. All I, all I heard you say was time, 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 <laughs> time, 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 time. The gym, <laughs> the gym, travel. Those my, are lots of times. Yeah, lots of yep. time, travel and freedom. And, uh, you know, I think the momentum that you've collected being single kind of creates an expectation that you have of how life functions and then let's say you mix in uh you know a spouse and they 
you know, they're just different than you. They are, they have a different everything. They're mm-hmm. just different. And then if you have some children and you throw some children to see, because you don't, you don't get to go to the mall you and pick out your pick kids, out. you know, nope. it's not like the, going to the, the, you know, the, the, the Haven Humane Society and go, I'll take that one and I'll take that one. You don't no, get a purebred. You, no, you just get them. They just pong, show up and they go, oh, look at your little devotional time. I'll take that. I'll eat it. You know, so you guys, have, I mean, when you think about maybe bringing somebody into your life as a a, a married person, do you, do you actually give thought to what it's going to cost you? A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah, totally. I always, I mean, with the Lord, I'm always like, God, I, I feel like personally for me, and I might've shared this with Brittany or Ben one, one time, but when I was like 18 or 19, I felt like the Lord just shared that word about like revival will come through family. Mm. And so I switched my major to like human services, started studying family because my parents' marriage was a really hard one. They're still married actually uh, close to 40 years now, but it was a really hard one for me to watch because I did not see um, their affection as much as I saw them just arguing growing up. So I was like, I do not want this. Like I knew I wanted to be married, but it was like, there was so much like fear and hesitation attached to marriage for me um, that I, I feel like the Lord has worked out. And now I, I really just feel settled in my own spirit of like, God, I, I actually think you have marriage for me because I actually want to redeem like a generational line. Like I actually believe that part of the promises over my life and part of the obedience in my life is going to be like having a family and raising kids and teaching them to love you. So for me, <laughs> it feels like a both and it feels like very exciting, but it also feels like a sacrifice of time oh, yeah. of like there are real fears <laughs> attached to it of like oh, I don't absolutely. know if I can John, do this and John, I Mark, love... John Maxwell says it's a law of sacrifice. You gotta give up to go up, baby. You gotta yes. give up to go up. Absolutely. And I've loved singleness. Like I've never been that girl that's like, oh my God, I need a guy. Oh, I need a guy. Like I just I've loved being single. I've loved it just being me and Jesus. But I recognize that there's a peace of God that I won't get to experience in heaven because it was only intended for earth and covenant in marriage that I'm like, oh, I actually want that, you know, and I think the two fears attached to it are like, I don't know if I'm good enough to be a, a good mom. And then I'm so scared to be a wife. And I'm and like, can I keep being as obedient to the Lord? Can I keep the missional heart that I've had and like go at the drop of a hat? in marriage and with kids. And I will have to figure that out, but I've watched, you know, friends and missions do it really, really well that are leading movements, leading ministries and, and bringing their kids with them. So lots of sacrifice. I'm looking forward to. (laughs) Awesome. Andrew, how about you? Yeah, I totally agree. I'm, I'm looking forward to the sacrifice. Um, I fill my time with, with all kinds of things that I would love to give to my wife and, and to my children. Um, my parents are, they, they've been married almost 40 years now. And so um, I love that they're best friends. My dad does everything with my mom. And so for me, the one, when I think of marriage, um, I think of uh, a wife that um, is going to be the salt of the earth for me. Um, everything is just going to be better. And um, I plan on doing everything with her. And so um, whatever the sacrifices may be, I'm, I'm so ready. I'm so ready for them. <laughs> <laughs> There's almost excitement in that his voice. That doesn't sound like a sacrifice. I don't know. I don't know why. That just you doesn't know, sound like a sacrifice. It, it, it is crazy. I, I'm, I, Ben, I've married nearly 20 years, almost. Nah, this year, we'll be married 20 years, which is crazy. We got married really young. So again, that single life didn't exist for very long. But I, I said it before, it's just we've had multiple marriages, but to each other. And, and I think that that's the, you know, the sacrifice. I don't think you really realize what it is until you're faced with it. Right. And um, the ability to keep choosing each other and um, to know what your priorities are and to know what is your, your mighty yes that 
before you actually say yes to this person, because otherwise those sacrifices, it feels like you're going to war all the time rather than I've got a partner that's willing to fight together against the thing that's trying to come at us rather than I'm going to fight you because you must be the problem. Mm -hmm. I think knowing how to navigate that, um, you know, that's a, that's a real thing out there for singles. Yeah. Which yeah. I mean, I would think is how does that, does that feel like a fear? Like you're going to choose the wrong person. Is that something that ever keeps you from engaging in a relationship or potential or maybe catch your eye, Andrew, cause you're actively waiting. So maybe <laughs> I don't know how, to, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you get your attention when you're not looking. He's, so he's actively <laughs> waiting for a year. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't okay. know how you get Andrew's that's attention because uh, he's after, not looking. Yeah, so that's after you, yeah. we're just a disco ball coming through the like, lobby. I'm I don't good know. With taking a year. <laughs> Or two. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> how do you how do you navigate? Is that a fear? Is that something that you struggle with? Like how are you knowing when to engage the mechanism? Is it and and confront that fear? Yeah, um I it's not a fear of mine. Um I can say that in the last year or so I've I've done some things that I normally wouldn't have done. Like I, I went on a blind date and um uh, it actually was absolutely amazing. Um, but in doing some of those things, I, I've, I've just felt that like how I feel in my heart of, of, um, waiting for, um, somebody that I, I know that I'm going to be connected to. I know that we're going to be grounded in, um, our vision, our love for Christ and, and what he has for us. Um, it's really just for me solidified that like, I, I feel like I am doing the right thing. Um, and I, I'm waiting for that one that does catch my eye. Um, so it's not a fear of mine that, um, that I would choose wrong. No. So Andrew's a good fisherman. He's just waiting for the right, the right one to take his bait. He's just, he's all about, he's watching. Yeah. So, so that's okay. I, I'm, I'm catching what you're dropping there, Andrew. Yeah. And and there's a, I mean, for both of you, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking the strength of your identity Mm -hmm. is, um, it's just beautiful. I mean, it, it really feels like there's a a guiding compass in your life. And uh, I often use the analogy of uh, people that uh, meet other people at an airport. Like we're all at the airport together and we're all, you know, and we're all, and we've, we're sitting in the seats there and you know, milling around at the restaurant somewhere. I met you in this airport and I, I just, I don't know. We just hit it off as so amazing. You're so amazing. I, I don't know what it is. And now you're in love. And you're like, and before you know it, you're changing your ticket from where you were going to where they're going. Mm-hmm. And now you are at the gate with them and you're hugging and this is so good. And you're on the plane and you have your first kiss on the plane. And this is, just, <laughs> this is so, Oh, I mean, and so you get to, you know, you were going to New York and, and now you're in the Sudan and you're like, Oh my gosh, you know, what am I doing in the Sudan? What, how in the world did my life turn out like this? And like, well, you changed your ticket so you could get in this relationship, mm-hmm. you know? And mm-hmm. I always say, man, meet somebody on the plane. Don't meet somebody at the airport, you know, if you're going to do it. And I think that is what I hear from both of you is like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm on the plane, man. If I meet somebody on the plane, that's great. But they mm-hmm. still, you know, we'll still take a year after we land. So it's, you know, it it feels... Um, almost written into your future that um, there's a confidence. Anyway, Andrew, that's what I heard you just say. Al, you want to you want to fill in the blanks there? Yeah, I don't think I kind of am with Andrew too. I don't think that I'm afraid of choosing the wrong one. I think I was in a relationship that actually could have been the right one and probably was. I think I more recognize that there's choice on both sides. And so when one person is choosing Jesus and then choosing you, that's awesome if you're both doing the same thing. But when one of you is like choosing that person and the other one's choosing something else and someone else, um, that's hard. So I think I personally am not afraid of choosing the wrong one. I think I'm just now a little bit more cautious about how quickly I give my heart out, I give my attention out. 
um, Mm -hmm. to, to two people, two guys. And at least for me in the last year, like Andrew was saying, he's done a couple of things that were uncomfortable or he maybe wouldn't naturally do. For me, I don't naturally trust people unless they have some sort of rapport. And since I've worked at Jesus Culture, I've allowed myself to trust other pastors, other leaders that have come in that love me, see me and say, hey, I'd I'd love for you to meet this guy or this person. And so I've had a couple for me, it's been rough, like, you know, just conversations, coffee, (laughs) phone calls, you know, where I'm like, oh man, this, this isn't, this ain't it. This ain't it. But Lord, I'm going to be like, I'm going to honor these leaders and the fruit of their life is good. The fruit of their marriages is good. So it's worth it to me to have a conversation with someone that they really love, that they would like me to meet. Um, but then at the end going like, oh, I have no fear of man and just saying like, hey, thanks for your time and affirming a couple of things and just saying, you know, like to Peace not out. pursue further relationship, but great <laughs> to meet. Yeah. So I think, <laughs> yeah, but that's hard too. You know, you don't want to oh, like, yeah. I'm, yeah. especially women, we don't want to like hurt people's feelings and, but you know what? You just have to be honest. I think honesty is the key. And then also recognizing, you know, you hear God and you know, pretty quickly, um, if that's going to be a good thing for you to pursue in this season you're in. Yeah, that's great. God. Good stuff. I love it. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, putting on display, the, you know, having the two of you on here is just really, um, what I've seen with some singles is that when, when getting married, married becomes their identity, it's, they forget mm-hmm. to happen in their own life. And, um, you know, so being able to display the richness that your life could have, even in singleness, that it's not the identity and that you are not this, whether you're single or married, but you're really a, a child of the king and that you have assignments and, and you've got a calling. And so being able to embrace that with security. And so just that was so much of our heart putting you on the Kylo show today was really just to remind people of that truth and how Mm -hmm. this season that we're in is they're all seasons and they change. And the fun part is that it's, it's kind of like Narnia. We don't really know what season we're about to turn the corner into. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. what is a wardrobe? Yeah. Is, a, is now a winter wonderland? Okay. Who saw that coming? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the beauty of yeah. God. Yeah. Really good. yeah. So good. Well, thank you guys so much for yeah. uh, spending time on here with us. Yeah. And thanks for doing a great job being on mission, you know, just being, mm-hmm. being obedient to the call of God on your life and uh, not waiting not waiting until, you know, he or she comes along and uh, is going to make it all better. But you guys right. are diligently good stewards of, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, the gifts and talents that God has yeah. given to you and yeah. called you into. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, guys. Creating whole, healthy people. Yes. That's what's on these, these screens right here. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for having us on. Yeah. So fun. Oh. Thank awesome. you. So wonderful. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening to the Kylo show and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Never miss an episode of the Kylo show by subscribing to Apple podcasts, Spotify, or watch us on the loving on purpose YouTube channel. Don't forget to submit your questions and testimonies to the Kylo show.com. The Kylo show is produced by Ali Armading, co-produced by Ashley Beck and Anna Hill sound engineer and edited by Taylor Silk and show promoter. Christian Don't forget whole healthy families, gonna save the world.